Hello everyone, my name is Abhas, and with me here today, I have Team 17080 Newt.exe from Potomac, Maryland. They were recently the Winning Alliance first selected at the Chesapeake Championship, giving them a ticket to the Power Play Houston World Championship, which they'll be competing at in April. They have a fantastic intake, deposit, transfer sequence, and more, and we're going to take a look at all of that coming up on First Updates now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Okay guys, let's start with your intake. I saw it going through cones all day on, at Chesapeake Champs, and it's just so fast and fluid. Let's first start with your extension specifically, and then we'll go on to the rest of it. So can you give me like an overview of the hardware? Sure. So our intake sits on a pair, pair of linear slides, which actually extend up to over four feet, allowing us to stay still and cycle on many junctions, uh, as well as an arm at the front that allows us to extend about like another extra foot for a bit of extra reach. Yeah, and so which linear slides are you guys using for your intake? Have you used these before or was it just sort of like, yeah, we'll give these ones a go? So for our uh, linear slides, we're using Masumi SAR 230s, and we found them to be reliable in our past, part uh, particularly during Freight Frenzy, where we use them on our robot. And yeah. Yeah, and so how are you powering your intake? I think I see two motors up at the front of the robot, um, but you know, you guys can tell us a little bit about the ratios you're running and the speeds, and if you've had any problems with it. Sure. So uh, in order to power intake, we're using two yellow jacket uh, 1,150 RPM motors. And we found that since uh, our intake slides aren't going to have to be fighting against gravity, uh, we could go pick a faster motor. And we found that these motors uh, gave us an excellent balance of speed and power. And in order to, and also these motors have a pair of a 3D printed, have a set of 3D printed pulleys on them. Uh, which allow us to uh, take in and ex put out string at the same rate. Yeah, and so was there any reason that you guys didn't go for like the GoBuilda pulleys that that you know that just GoBuilda sells in a standard to use, uh, like with their motors and stuff? Like, why did you decide to go with a three D printed spool? Uh, we mostly decided to go for a three D printed spool because the GoBuilda pulleys wouldn't fit our robot with the configuration that we wanted. Okay. Gotcha. And so, you know, looking forward to the World Championship, are there any changes you want to make specifically to your intake extension? Or, like, is that part fast enough for your cycles uh, and your teleop and autonomous and everything? Uh, generally, we feel that the extension for our, our robot is fast enough for our purposes. Uh, but if we feel that we need even more speed, we have an option to go even faster. Okay. Cool. And so, you know, jumping into your arm uh, now, walk me through that, give me an overview of it, and then we'll also talk about the software and how that works with, like, the whole intake. Cool. Sure. Uh, so our arm is a uh, custom machine uh, driven four bar. So starting off, the arm is powered by a ser uh, servo geared to its base. And what this lets us do is it lets us accurately control its uh, height so we can intake both from the stack and from the ground and also for our transfer. And also a chain running alongside it connecting to the end allows us to hold the uh, intake claw at the same level no matter where the uh, intake arm uh, is positioned. And it's connected to a servo as well, which means that we can pivot it forward and backwards which is especially useful during our transfer when it needs to uh, pivot backwards in order to make sure that securely fits. Yeah, and so I think I see some herringbone gears for your uh, intake arm. Is that true, or are those just like normal spur gears? Yeah, uh, so we decided to 3D print our own herringbone gears for our arm. Uh, we chose this because that way we could, uh, with 3D printed gears, we can finally tune what ratios that we want. And uh, herringbone gears a lot, uh, 
don't slip nearly as often as just straight spur gears, so which is why we went for that option. And so talking about your claw definitely doesn't look like a standard like open source claw or anything like that. So walk me through that and how it's changed throughout the season. Sure. So uh, our for our claw design, there are two parts to each claw. So starting off at the front, there is a, a small section without any silicone or foam on it. And what this allows us to do is if uh, that section touches the cone, it can slide on the claw and funnel it towards uh, the section that we wanted to grab it towards. And we also have a layer of silicone and uh, some foam towards the, uh, more towards the center of the claw. And this allows us for secure grip. And we have a layer of foam on there because what this lets us do is it lets uh, the silicone wrap around uh, the cone giving us a more secure grip. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. And I see that you guys have like some claw iterations over there. So what was like the reasoning behind switching from a much longer claw that you guys have like in the blue to the current, uh, you know, more shorter, shorter design? So uh, this blue design was actually the first design that we made this season. And uh, while it did grab the cone sometimes, uh, what happened is you know, because there was so long, uh, if the cone grabbed towards the edge, so, sorry, towards the outside of the claw, uh, the cone would often slip and fail to transfer. We dropped the cone, uh, mm -hmm. which led us to a design with uh, small pinches at the front, which would allow us to funnel in the cones, but also making sure that the part that was actually grabbing the cone was much closer to the pivot, giving it more force. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. And so before we go on to your transfer and deposit, let's talk a little bit about the software. I see like a, a rev color distance sensor right below your claw. Um, and I'm sure you guys are running encoders on your motors. So why don't you talk to me a little bit about the automations you guys have in your intake and how you use sensors to um, to do those? Yeah, exactly. So um, for these motors, we use um, either set power directly for going in and out or set go into position when we know how far we are and how far we need to go. And in autonomous, what we do is we extend out um, at uh, partial power. And then once we get I think once we get close, we slow down. And then once we're at some distance, we detect the cone. And um, then we, we, so we, we, and we see how far it is. And then we calculate how many more ticks we need to move and tell the motors to move that many ticks more. Yeah, no, that's that's really cool. And so, you know, talking about your transfer now, before you guys explain it, can we see your transfer process? Um, and then you guys can talk about, like, how you were able to get it so smooth and so fast. All right. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And so can you guys give us an overview of your transfer process, how you got it to work so well, and what were some challenges you had with it? Sure. So starting off after the robot uh, it grabs a cone, first it needs to raise the cone in order to make sure that it isn't sliding across the ground and might hit any junctions or anything else that might cause the robot to lose its grip. Uh, afterwards, a robot completely retracts the slides in order to prepare it to transfer. And finally, uh, when it has finished retracting the slides, the outtake claws open up and the intake arm swings backwards. Uh, pressing the cone into the outtake in order to make sure that uh, it securely sits in the outtake. And after uh, it's done with that step, there is a color sensor in the outtake that detects when there is a when the cone is in a proper position to finish uh, transferring. And when the color sensor says, "Okay, you can finish," uh, this the intake claw lets go of the cone and the outtake claw grabs onto it, giving us a secure grip. Wow. Yeah. And so like, what was the most difficult part of your guys' transfer process and how were you able to solve it? So this transfer is a fairly convoluted transfer, especially for this season. And one of the main issues that we uh, encountered when making this transfer was tuning what position the outtake needed to sit. Because even sometimes even if we were off by about five millimeters in any direction, uh, the transfer would fail. And if you see here we actually made a several iterations of the mounting so, can you move to medium? Uh, so for this left hand part right here uh, we made several iterations of that mostly just tuning uh, specific positions 
And after like four or five iterations, we were finally able to dial that position in order to get a successful transfer. Every mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I just tell you uh, one thing on the software side that helped a lot was um, using World Order, sorry, FTC dashboard, where we can um, put the code into uh, variables that, and then we can put the position to one place in the code, and then we can also um, even modify them from a uh, another computer connected by Wi-Fi for testing, which makes iteration much much faster. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic. And so I want to talk about your vertical lift first for your deposit. I mean, we can see that you guys have a ton of experience with linear slides, you know, looking at your intake. So it must have been a conscious decision to go with a double reverse four bar instead of like a linear extension for your deposit. So what was the reasoning behind that? And, you know, looking forward for Houston, is that something you're planning on changing? or Are you very happy with the performance you have there? Yes. So at the beginning of the season, uh, we noticed two things about the outtake. First of all, we wanted it to have a fairly fast extension. And second, as this game requires lifting something fairly high, uh, we wanted the outtake to have a low center of gravity. So that's why I went for a double reverse four bar, because uh, double reverse four bars are fairly fast, and as well as light. And the reason why we chose this specific design, you might notice that instead of just using two virtual four bars or two normal four bars, we have a virtual on top and a uh, normal four bar on bottom. I chose this design because the normal four bar on the bottom would provide us with stability, while the virtual four bar on top would be light, making it so that our robot has a low center of gravity and it's hard to tip. Yeah, and so, you know, like looking back at this, is this a decision you're you're glad you made or would you have rather done linear slides if you could go over and do it again? Previously in the season, uh, we had several several times where we thought about switching to linear slides, mostly regarding the stiffness of our a four bar. But with several ch a change to stiffness and tolerance, we decided that in the end, this design was the one that we stick with. Sure. And so how are you, uh, how are you powering your DR4B? Um, and yeah, let's take a look at that transmission. So uh, in order to power double reverse four bar, we have a four to one gearbox powered by a yellow jacket 312 RPM motor. And when designing this robot, we, calc we calculated, we, we calculated an amount of torque that we think the uh, outtake would impart onto uh, the thing that was driving it. And we found out that this uh, gearbox plus this motor would actually give us twice the amount of torque that we need uh, that we needed, which was a healthy margin. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah. And so one thing I noticed like with your uh, deposit with your deposit lift is that you guys don't seem to have any like counter spring or anything. Uh, was it just like you didn't need it or are there plans to add this for Houston? So uh, throughout the season, we uh, uh, realized that we didn't need counter springing, mostly owing to how light this mechanism turned out to be. Sure, sure. And so talking a little bit about, I know one thing that's really special about your team is that you don't only have a DR4B, but you also have a short horizontal extension at the top. So let's take a deep dive into that. Talk about how you made it happen and what's gone into it. Sure. So we have a servo uh, driven pair of uh, MGN9 slides. And we chose MGN9 slides because even though they're made of steel and steel is a bit heavy, what this would let us do is it let us pack all this into a really small form factor. And we chose a servo driven linkage design because it turned out to be fast, it, because it's fast and we really, really didn't need the power or the weight of a motor. Sure. And can we see that horizontal actuation uh, while we're at the top? Uh, pause it, I guess. Yeah. Just, just bring it up all the way. Down and then. Bring it up all the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. That's that's so that's so awesome. And so, was this horizontal extension something you had like the entire season, or did you realize a need for it and add it at some point? So, so when the so look, when designing the robot, uh, we had we decided that we wanted uh, our arm to not be too long, which is why our intake outtake ended up sitting somewhere in the middle of a robot. Mm -hmm. But since our uh, intake sits in the middle of the robot, that means that we basically need to eat the junction in order to deposit, which is something that we decided we do not want to do. 
as it could possibly incur many penalties, mm -hmm. which is why we ended up going with a small horizontal extension to make sure that our uh, depositing would actually be outside. Also, this allows us to stay in place while cycling because we can have the junction here and we can just go on top of it and then pull down and then retract back. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. And so, Newt, you know, before we end off the interview, you guys have qualified for the World Championship, a very impressive feat, especially this season. And so what are your team's plans for that? How do you, I'm sure you'd like to do well. So how are you going to ensure that? Um, and, you know, can we get a little preview of what we're going to expect from Team 17080 at the Houston World Championship? Sure. So hardware-wise, we're satisfied with the majority of a robot. But one thing that we've been having issues with is uh, especially uh, with how competitive world robots are, we think that a, a one plus five auto on high plus a park would be absolutely necessary. And our current design uh, would either need to move a lot, would either need to move or uh, sit on the central line, both of which could uh, decrease the reliability of our auto. We only do medium currently. Yeah. So something that we're thinking of, we're not exactly sure if we want to implement it yet, but we might want to implement like a small turret arm on the end of our Dolores 4 bar. Wow. Okay. And, you know, talking about the software briefly, what, uh, it would just be changes to make sure that you can make that turret a reality, or would there be like other autonomous or programming changes that you'd like to make? Yeah, so that's one thing. And that's another thing with auto is we're considering... Um, if we if we got the turret working, we can probably just stay in pace. So it's not a big deal. But our driving right now in autonomous is pretty slow. We're using Road Runner, and uh, we tuned at some point. But I'm not sure if its tuning is up to date um, because spines don't seem to be working. So we're gonna we're considering working on that to make spines work, or maybe make a custom thing that just uses the ID or something. Got it. Got it. So, Newt.exe, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to see you guys perform at the Chesapeake Championship. Your driving, autonomous, just overall game, everything was absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see what you bring to the Houston World Championship. And so, reporting for First Updates now, I'm Abhas. Everybody, thank you for watching this interview. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash FIRST to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.